Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at walls again in Revit. Uh, this is going to be the second walls video, the first one being about specifically instance parameters of walls. That's it, only the instance properties. Whereas this one is covering all the type properties, everything that you need to know about the type. And so I'd highly, highly recommend that you go look at that first video first and then come back to the type properties. But before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, because that's maybe why you're here, hopefully, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out very, very much. Okay, here we are. Blank project. Blank project. Absolutely nothing going on. So I'm going to take a wall, and I'm just going to place it there. It's going to be a generic 8-inch wall. Uh, we don't really care about anything about the wall yet. So, again, in the in the previous video, I'll, I covered everything about instance properties yeah, everything over here whenever I click on the wall all of these we have covered all of this in pretty good detail and so what we care about now is actually the type properties which is the type if I click edit type everything here about this type so there, there's less here than there are instance properties but they do have a bigger impact because of the way type properties work of course wherever I have this type of wall in this case an 8 inch generic wall wherever that's placed in my project every single thing that i end up changing within my type properties will be populated across all of the walls that are generic eight inches throughout my entire project so they have a, a greater impact which is a good and a bad thing obviously obviously if you know if you're, what you're doing which you will at the end of this video we are going to cover everything here and so you'll know how you're impacting all your walls so first thing i'm going to save the structure of a wall for a completely separate video. I mean, there's probably going to be multiple videos. So just take note that this is coming, but this is going to be, uh, obviously it's, it's a type property. So that's kind of important, but I want to cover that completely separately. So here we go. Wrapping at inserts. So first of all, what is wrapping? Well, wrapping has everything to do with the way elements within the wall structure end up moving across to either another, another wall or maybe you have a door showing up or something like that. So let's go ahead and put in a door here. And you, we'll find out very quickly that we don't like this wall type that we're using, this generic 8-inch, but we'll move on for now. But wrapping at inserts. So if we even hover over this, we can see, yeah, it's a built-in parameter, it's a drop-down, and there's there's quite a lot here. And so I, I want to spend a second on it. Um, wrapping at inserts hovering over this is really helpful by the way so do that uh, we can see the different impacts that we have depending on what we choose whether we choose do not wrap exterior layers interior or wrap it's it's very helpful and you can see basically with an opening in this case a wall a, win a window a door anything like that how the pieces of a wall the structure of a wall the interior elements of a wall are going to wrap around an opening uh, the first one being that there there's no wrapping. Like it's just stopping at that opening. That's it. You've got the second one, this is exterior, where your exterior finish is ends up wrapping around uh, to meet the interior. Okay, we've got the interior where it does the same thing, where it wraps around and meets the exterior. And then we have wrap all of it, which is where the interior and exterior come together. Now, this is all fine. Um, and I'll tell you why this is not a good wall to use, because when I go into the structure, it's just one element. There's only one piece to the whole wall, which is kind of pointless. And so I'm actually going to select both of these walls, and we're going to change this to something, maybe brick on CMU. And so right now we can't see anything, so why not? Well, we're actually in detail level course. Let's go to detail level medium or fine. Both will show. But we can see, all right, here are all the elements. And so uh, this is... Uh, obviously more helpful now because we can see what's going on and so let's go in here and start changing these wrapping and so let's change it to exterior and we can see that the brick will start wrapping around so let's hit apply and we can see that there's my brick wrapping around cool and then if I change this to interior I would get kind of the opposite effect from the interior there we go and then finally both obviously is both we're gonna get all these wrapping up and so <sighs> Honestly, this is something I have never changed in my over 10 years of using Revit. I've never, for any single wall, and maybe someone disagrees with this or not, I have never changed wrapping and inserts to anything other than do not wrap. And it's just because I haven't. You know, I, I could take the time to go do that for the particular wall that it is, but I just don't. Why not? Because 
in this case, if we're talking about documenting, I mean, this is mainly for documenting. We see it in plan and no one's gonna get this close in a, an overall floor plan to see what's going on, nor is that how you should document. Uh, but what I would typically do is either I'd call out this particular door d detail, like this jam detail, or I would like reference a detail in the door schedule. And because this, I, I, even if I were referencing it here, it wouldn't matter if I had my wrapping showing up correctly one way or not, because I would cover the way that that detail should look within the actual detail. So it's going to be covered. I just don't need to worry about within a wall. But again, that is up to you. If you want to deal with that, great. Wrap it. I don't care. And then, so here we go. Similar vein. We've got wrapping at ends. Of course, I'm going to hover over this. It's a built-in parameter. And we get the same kind of thing. At the end of a wall, how do we want this to actually wrap around? Well, um, exterior, interior, or none. So if we see the exterior, it's going to wrap that exterior around the finish. So like, I just have this end of the wall floating out that's what's going to happen. And then interior is going to do the same thing. And then of course we could do none. This is again, something I've basically never changed. I've there are very rare circumstances where I've done that. Okay. Whatever. Uh, again, up to you. If you're like gung ho and here, you have a really good reason why it needs to be done everywhere. Please let me know. Kind of curious. Um, if we look at the width, well, this is grayed out and just know this moving forward, anything grayed out, within Revit is something that's built in that you can't change or you just don't have the ability to change it based on what you have selected or anything like that. It's just, it's generally a reporting parameter. And if you're familiar with parameters, you can make an instance parameter that reports or receives information. And what it ends up reporting is that value. In this case, it's, this is a, a built in reporting parameter and it is pulling just the width of the entire wall. And you can see this width, if we come into the structure, there's my total thickness also, which is whatever, doesn't matter. It's just kind of reporting. So there's nothing that we can do here. It's all based on the structure of the wall. And so then function. This, it, there are a number of different types or functions that you can label a wall as. And so I do want you to note that this has no effect on the wall structure, the way it looks, the way it, it has no effect on the wall whatsoever. If I change this to a core shaft and apply, nothing happens. Well, I shouldn't say nothing because if you have a wall schedule created, which I'd probably recommend that you do, then this can be something that you can choose to sort by. You know, maybe you only, only want to show interior walls. Maybe you only want to show exterior walls. And that function is then where it starts to populate. It becomes important whenever you're dealing with schedule. It's also maybe you're looking to, you know, fiddle with Dynamo. And whenever you you want to use walls and like get all the walls in your project, you might want to filter out, filter down, or just ignore every wall that's exterior. Maybe you only want to look at interior. So then you can make sure that your walls are labeled as exterior. Now, the reason I say that I don't normally end up changing this is because a lot of times I'll just take any of these walls and just duplicate them and be on my way. And because I'm not specifically scheduling walls and because I'm not specifically going to go into Dynamo and do something with only ex in exterior or only interior walls. I would, it, honestly, the best practice is to change the function to the actual function. And nine times out of 10, it's going to be interior or exterior. That's kind of all it is. Uh, maybe there's some shaft walls, whatever. But best practice is to do that. So do that if you want. And so, okay, here we go. Moving down to graphics. Uh, core scale fill pattern. Well, this is blank. It's white, but we're very familiar with these. These are all the hatch patterns in my project, all the drafting hatch patterns. Cool. And then we've got the coarse scale fill color. Of course, it's black, all the colors, whatever. That doesn't matter. So what's this for? Well, a lot of times this is specifically for when you are in a coarse view. And so if you remember before we could see all the wall elements, we were in a coarse view. And of course, <laughs> we can't see anything, any of the structure or the makeup of the wall because we're in a coarse view. Now, given that, what is, what's the point of this? Well, the coarse scale, scale fill pattern, maybe we decide, well, we just, we want this, you know, this crosshatch look on this, on this wall. And because we're in a coarse view, we're going to see that. When I hit apply, I can see that. Cool. Well, and now the second I change from coarse to medium or fine, we actually see the layers of our wall. So this is kind of interesting. 
I don't use this for a ton of things, but the main thing that I do use it for is uh, life safety plans. So there's a lot of times where you need to have walls that show specific fire ratings generally, it, it, generally around the fire or smoke ratings, the walls might need to show up differently. And so of course I can come in here and change the instance properties. I can, I can override this element. I can do whatever I want to with the cut pattern, anything there, but it doesn't make sense to do that because generally speaking, when it comes to life safety, it has to do based on the wall type, generally speaking. So I'm going to use a particular type of wall wherever I need a one or two hour fire rating, like that, that kind of a thing. And so what a lot of what I do is make this red and, you know, of course it's going to show up red and it's going to look really nice. And not only that, but whenever I go back to my documents that are on a medium or fine view, then I don't have to worry about this red or anything showing up. I still have the same walls in the same place. I don't have to do anything extra for life safety plan showing up correctly. Okay, cool. And so what is this? We've looked at the graphics. Now moving on to materials and finishes. Now why can't I deal with this? Why can't I change this? Well, again, this is pulling from the structure of the actual construction of the wall. You'll see structural material is concrete concrete masonry units. Okay, well, where do we see that? Well, if I go within the structure of the wall, all the way within the structure, the only thing that's structure happens to be concrete masonry unit. And that's just, it's just the material. So it's literally reporting that material back to this parameter. I don't know why it's there necessarily, but cool. And then we move along down to all of these. These are things that I as an architect, maybe should pay a little more attention to certain times I might need to if I'm doing very specific things with uh, need very specific types of walls. But um, most of the time, this is not going to be that applicable, nor will it matter. Um, obviously, if I change the different wall types, we either lose information or have more information based on it being a generic and also based on it being a specific built in wall from Revit in this case. So Looking at this, we can see, well, all of this information is kind of built into the wall. It's against, it's a reporting parameter, pulling, pulling data from the wall itself and the wall structure and all of that. So that's cool. It's actually pulling from the materials. I mean, yeah, it's pulling from these materials. And if you look at those materials, that reports back to the wall and the, based on how big the wall, whatever, whatever. The type of wall, it's going to report there. Now, we do have the ability to change the absorption or the absorbance or the roughness if we want to. I, I have never done this, never really needed to. And so we're going to move all the way down to the identity data. Well, this is something you've, you've seen. Every Basically every element has a, some kind of identity data. And so that's all. it's all kind of basic stuff. You can choose to add information here. You can choose not to. So this is where a lot of times I'll add the fire ratings and then that will be reported on life safety schedules and you know it'll all work out well, whether it's a one hour, two, three, whatever. And so you can add all this information that you want. Obviously, you can use this or not. The assembly description, that's all it's, That's all it is. I mean, that's not a big deal. Um, but this is all information that you can choose to use or not. Um, most of the time, I don't need to unless I'm trying to do something specific with the wall or filter out walls. Or Again, it has a lot to do with schedules. All, of, all the information that you see here can be populated on a wall schedule if you wanted to access it, which is why manipulating or adding some of your own data might be kind of important. And so at this point, maybe we want to be able to add our own parameters. You know, we want to add more. We want to, whatever it might be, there might be a reason why you want to add um, some sort of parameter to a wall. And you can do that pretty simply. I have made a separate video that is specifically looking at project parameters, uh, but I want to go ahead and make one to show you how it can be populated. And so at this point, we can come over here to uh, manage uh, project parameters. And there's just one right now, but I can go ahead and add one. Let's go ahead and make a new one. And maybe, maybe we just want to indicate where a wall has artwork or something you know, like which walls have artwork well i can i'm just going to call this artwork and then immediately we have the option of choosing between a type and an instance property that's going to change the different selection we have in this case we're looking at types so let's look at type of walls first and so i don't care about any of this except walls like i only want this to be populated within walls and of course i can have it go to wall sweeps or not but i, I definitely walls i want this to be accessible within a wall type and say and so at this point is it a, 
a length, what type of parameter is it? Well, it's going to be just a yes or no. Again, this is not a huge deal uh, because I just want to be able to say, oh yeah, when I'm scheduling these walls out, I can say, yep, there's artwork on this wall. Okay. So I'll click OK. Great. Okay, nothing happens yet. And whenever I click on this wall, still nothing. I don't see it over here, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. But in my edit type, I can see when I scroll all the way down, I can see, oh, look, artwork. Now, this is just the unfortunate part of yes or no parameters, but there's basically, they're not yes or no. They're kind of null <laughs> uh, until you toggle it on or off, which is kind of silly, but it just, it's the way it is. And you could... Again, the fact that this is all within the type properties of a wall means that within a wall schedule, you can literally schedule by artwork. You know, you could see, are these walls scheduled or not? Yes. Or are these walls going to have artwork on them or not? Yes or no? Okay, cool. So great. And so whenever I click on this wall, of course, it's the same wall. And then I don't have artwork there. Now, let's go ahead and place another wall. This wall is great. And so right now... Of course, there's not going to be artwork on this wall. Why? Because when I go to the type, it's going to be null. But I can choose to have that yes or no. So at this point, maybe we decide, well, you know, I don't want artwork on all the walls that are this particular exterior brick. I just want to determine which walls specifically. Well, then that means we have a perfect candidate for an instance parameter. So we can come back into artwork and I can modify this. And you'll notice, well, I can't actually modify this. I need to make it again, which is not a huge deal. I'll go ahead and remove that, and I'll, I'll lose the information, but I'm just going to call it artwork again. And I want to make sure that this is an instance parameter. I'm going to scroll all the way down to walls, make sure that populates there. Again, just a yes or no is fine. And then we're done. Click OK, and that's it. And so now whenever I click on walls here, scrolling all the way down to other, I can see there's artwork. And I can check that on or off specifically for this wall or that wall. And so whenever I come over to this wall, I can see that yeah, it's it doesn't have artwork on it that necessarily, um, but I can do this independently. And so when of course whenever you're scheduling walls, you can determine if you want each wall specifically, if it's an instance parameter, to show up as having artwork or not. So interesting. So really, we have looked at all the different type properties for walls. Um, there's not a ton. Uh, mainly the structure and the function, those types of things. There's not a lot to worry about, but um, it is just as long as you know how type properties work, you're going to affect all of that particular wall with everything that you make, everything change that you make, which is helpful because I could come into the structure, change all the structure, and no matter where I have that wall placed, it's all updated just like that, which is perfect. So that will do it for this video. Be sure to stick around because the next one will probably have something to do with the structure of the wall, which starts to get into the quite nitty gritty of the wall because there's a lot going on with the walls. Uh, obviously, you can see here there's a lot going on with this wall. So again, that will do it for this video. I hope you did learn something. If you did, please let me know that you did by demolishing that like button. It really, really helps me out quite a lot. So I will see you in the next video. More walls to come. <laughs> see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.